so I will not use all this time. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you in advance for your invitation, which I appreciate a lot, because it came at the right moment. Not because, as you might know, except of, of uh, the leader of the opposition in Greece, uh, I am candidate of European left for the presidency of the European Commission, but because uh, to be uh, to introduce the issue of our discussion, because I believe that yes, indeed, democracy in Europe is in retreat. And this is the reason, the purpose, and the real meaning of my candidacy. <coughs> to end austerity, to regain democracy in Europe. Democracy is in retreat, and the reason, and that is not by accident, there is reasons, and I think that the main reason is the current policies, the neoliberal policies. So the reason is the neoliberalism, the neoliberalism itself. It's the neoliberal austerity that causes recession zero or low and jobless growth, with the Netherlands expected to reach in 2017 the real economic output level of 2008. Austerity brought youth unemployment in the Eurozone to the unprecedented 25%, and the reason also is the lack of transparency, lack of legitimacy, and lack of accountability and credibility of the European institutions. The European Union is distant from the peoples of Europe in all respects. It has alienated its citizens. That's why the people react with apathy, distrust, and Euroscepticism. That's how xenophobic, extreme right-wing populism rises. I know you have your, in your country Gert Wilders and his so-called Party from Freedom. That's how neo-Nazism <coughs> rises. And as you know very well, in Greece we have the Golden Dome Party. So, comrades and friends, our opponents like to say that we overcome the crisis with the current policy, that it made it. But the reality is that the crisis in Europe goes on. The more it lasts, the more it destabilizes the process of European integration. The more it threatens the stability of the Eurozone, it has revealed both the inadequacies and the limits of that process. It's an integration centered on finance and liberalization, centered on the monetary union, enveloped in the replica of the Buddhist Bank, the European Central Bank, it's an integration that breeds recession. It's an integration that stresses inequalities and asymmetries inside each member state and among member states. It's an integration that spreads the web of poverty and the lower social classes to the lower social classes. The European establishment has managed the crisis not in order to resolve it, but in order to rewrite Europe's post-war political economy. In order to trigger the avalanche of capital against labor. That's why we don't tolerate diversity of national institutions. That's why Chancellor Merkel in Germany, along with the neoliberal bureaucratic elite in Brussels, treat social solidarity and human dignity as 
economic distortions. A national sovereignty as a nuisance. That's why they are forcing Europe to wear the straight jacket, the straight jacket of austerity, the straight jacket of discipline and deregulation. So our own response is straightforward, as I said before, to end austerity and regain democracy. We want to end Europe's current malaise, as Amartya Sen, the Nobel Prize winning economist, has described it, the replacement of democratic commitments by financial dictates. We want to recommend Europe with with the enlightenment and to give primacy to democracy. We want to end neoliberalism in order to restore democracy. Our opponents says, oh, you cannot have both. You cannot have democracy and European integration. We say to them that the European Union will either be democratic or it will not exist. For us, democracy, it is not negotiable. This is our political alternative to neoliberalism and to the neoliberal process of European integration. Democracy, more democracy and ever deeper democracy. Particularly at this point in time that neoliberalism has transformed an economic crisis into a crisis of European democracy. And this is not, believe me, this is not a theoretical statement at all. Because we are talking about a crisis that takes very practical from, forms in real life. At least in the memorandum countries, austerity has undermined its institutional authority and the political role of national parliaments. For example, in my country, in Greece, the system of institutional checks and balances has collapsed. The parliament is no longer a mechanism of democratic control of government authority. It has become an institutional supplement of the government. It only ratifies Troika's decisions. European democracy is also in retreat because member states of the European Union, and in particular of the Eurozone, transfers competencies to centralized institutions that have no democratic legitimacy or operational transparency. <coughs> to institutions whose decisions are, let me say, German-inspired, because they reflect the current balance of power in Europe. So the rest of us, we transfer national sovereignty and lose democracy because anonymous and uncountable bureaucrats substitute for elected politicians in decision-making. And those bureaucratic institutions actually operate in a way that is less transparent, less accountable, and less open to popular participation than those of most member states. So, this is not the Europe that we want. This is the Europe of the conservatives, the Europe of liberals, the Europe of social democrats that became neoliberals year by year, but not our Europe. This is the Europe we want to change. We want Europe, but we don't want neoliberalism. We want the Eurozone, but we don't want austerity. Austerity pulls the trigger on the Eurozone, 
no tshurizen. Those who say that the Europe we live in cannot change, they say it because they don't want Europe to, say, to change. Because their interests is for today's Europe not to change. They are indeed deeply anti-European. Because they support the European Union that is now giving its peoples austerity, unemployment, poverty, a fall in the standard of living and diminished expectations and prospects for the future. Let me say that I understand Mrs. Merkel to react with anger when the European left and especially Syriza threatened the people of her ideology, the Europe of her ideology, uh, especially during the last elections in Greece in May of 2012. I understand Mrs. Merkel react when uh, Syriza threatened the Europe of her interests, the Europe that she has been building slowly but steadily over the crisis years. But this I cannot understand is the Greek Prime Minister Samaras reaction. He came into power as an enemy of austerity who would give the cold shoulder to Mrs. Merkel. He is leaving power as a blind neoliberal, a friend of austerity, and an uploader of, Mr. Mer of Mrs. Merkel. With the Greek people suffering an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. With official unemployment in Greece around 30%, <coughs> and youth unemployment more than 60%, and the Greek pu public debt to GDP ratio to be out of control, having al already reached the level of 176% of GDP in 2014. And I have to remind you at this point that the Greek debt has exploded during the memorandum years because of the memorandum policies of recessionary austerity. So I'm wondering what's the reason to applaud for? What's the success story to be proud of? What is the political legacy to be remembered of? Comrades and friends, the democratic reorganization of the European Union is central in our pre-electoral campaign for the European elections and for the presidency of the European Commission. As, of course, the immediate end of austerity is, we want to extend the scope of public intervention. We want to extend the scope of citizen engagement and participation in European policy making and service design. In this context, at this point, I would like to ask your supporting to the upcoming European elections in May. Your supporting and solidarity to Syriza and Greece and to the fight of Greek people against austerity, but also to support our common fight and our campaign for my candidacy for the European Commission presidency, not as a personal battle, of course, but as a common battle against austerity, against neoliberalism in Europe. I want to make clear once again that my candidacy is not a candidacy of European South Periphery. It's a candidacy of all European citizens and especially for the people who suffer from austerity 
regardless of their address. Whether they live in the south of Europe, or in the north, or in the east, or in the west. It's a candidacy that wants to unite the people that the neoliberal management of the crisis divides. We particularly address young men and women because for the first time in post-war Europe, a generation of young people expects to be worse off than their parents. The young see their expectations entrapped into high unemployment and the prospect of low wage and jobless growth. So we have to act not for them, but we have to act with them, with the young people, men and women. And we have to act now. We have to fight for a democratic, social and ecological Europe. We have to fight to set in motion the ecological transformation of production and reform, the European immigration framework. <coughs> but apart from the policies, we first need funds to implement these policies. So to regain dem the democracy in Greece, we need a European Union able to finance its own choices. We need a strong European budget managed by the European Parliament. That's why we support the mediate repeal, cancellation of the memorandum of austerity. And that's why we support the coordinated reflation of all European economies. That's why we want a genuine European Central Bank acting as a lender of, ra of last resort, not only for banks, but also for states. That's why we believe that Europe needs its own Glass-Steagall Act in order to separate commercial and investment banking activities and prevent such a dangerous mass of risks into one uncontrolled entity. That's why we want effective European legislation which taxes offshore economic and entrepreneurial activities. That's why we support the collective, credible and definite resolution of the Eurozone debt crisis through a European debt conference predicated on the 1953 London Conference for Germany's debt. That, if you remember, cancelled a significant part of the German debt after the Second World War, about 60%, with a gross close, and uh, also with moratorium in the repayments. Instead of this Europe, in place of a Europe of that distributes income to the rich and fair to the poor, we propose our Europe of solidarity. We propose our Europe of economic and social security, of employment and prosperity. So now, let me say some words about the situation in Greece. You know that the social and economic situation deteriorated more and more, day by day, but at the same time, a hope is rising in Greece, Syriza, the left-wing party, is government in waiting. Our electoral victory would signify a regime change for Greece. But at the same time, it will be a political multiplier in favor of the European and the austerity movement. It would create on its own the conditions for policy change and the new political balance in the entire European Union. 
But I want to make clear at this point that it's one thing to create the conditions for change and another thing for change to actually happen. Change is possible as never before, but it will not come about automatically. Change will actually happen only if the peoples of Europe and their own multiplier to the, the austerity fight of the Syriza government. For the balance of forces in, in, in Europe to shift, to shift and the austerity popular mobilization and support across Europe is indispensable. So the newly elected Syriza government will be negotiating with our European partners in the European uh, institutions and with the German Council, of course, Mrs. Merkel, not only for Greece, not only for European periphery, but also for the working people of the entire Eurozone, of the entire Europe, also for the Dutch and the Germans and the Finns alike. And I'm saying that because austerity harms all of you, all of us, and this is what we want to end. This is the reason that we're coming to power. We're coming into power to replace austerity with development, to replace catastrophe with reconstruction. And this is a historic challenge for Europe. So let me point out that the problem is not the agent of a policy, but the policy itself. Because I know here in the North you don't have memorandum, but you have austerity. So the point is not to dissolve the Troika and continue with the Troika policies. Nowadays, the Greek government and the Greek Prime Minister is preparing a new memorandum the third in a row. I don't know with which name, perhaps with a different name, but <coughs> with the same policies, <coughs> with new austerity measures. It is therefore Mr. Samaras himself who sets the actual dilemma of the coming parliamentary elections in Greece. Austerity or development? Memorandum or Syriza? <laughs> Mr. Samaras should have realized by now that political deception succeeds, succeeds only one. Should have realized that the Greek people are alert. They remembered his pre-electoral promise in 2012 to renegotiate memorandum and to cancel salary and pension cuts. They remember his post-electoral U-turn as well. The public apology to Mrs. Merkel for his anti-memorandum past and his subsequent submission to her policies. Even speaking before the European Parliament last Wednesday, that is speaking before the most critical of the Troika European institution, Mr. Samaras remained an advocate of the success story of austerity. Once again, he couldn't rise to the occasion. He failed to inform the peoples of Europe that almost 98% of the Troika loans to Greece go for the repayment of the past loans and bank recapitalization, not to the Greek people. And this is something that I have to underline. Everybody has to know this truth. He felt to inform the peoples of Europe that Greece was sacrificed and Greek people were sacrificed 
not to save Greek economy, but to save European banks. That in reality, the Greek people recapitalize European banks with their unprecedented sacrifices under two successive memoranda, memoranda of austerity since May 2010. He also failed in the European Parliament, he also failed to inform the peoples of Europe that Greece is under an unprecedented for a European country in peacetime humanitarian crisis. That a significant part of the Greek society is suffering because of austerity, not having access to any of the basic social services, that more than 25% of the population live below the poverty line, that 6 of 10 citizens do not visit their doctor in Greece due to their inability to pay, that 3 million people in a population of 11 million do not have health insurance, that 40% of the population make savings on their food to get their medicines. Dear comrades and friends, austerity has proven to be an economic and social catastrophe. A catastrophe for democracy, a catastrophe for Europe. Austerity is the crisis itself. It's not a solution to the crisis. We are confident that political action with collective mobilization could make it history and could open the road to a better future. But we have to act in this process, in this project. We are confident, confident that the left in Europe will be, could be the positive sharp rise of the May European elections, but we have to work together to this project. So, I want to thank you for your invitation. Uh, I'm very happy that I'm seeing that a lot of people, not only in the European South, uh, are solidarity, give solidarity to the Greek people, but I want to remind you that we are giving a common fight. If austerity goes on in Greece, <coughs> there is no other way to go on in entire Europe. If we try to stop austerity and change the balances in Greece, this will be a strong message for everybody, for every country in Europe. So I think that uh, our battle in Greece is your battle in Netherlands. Your battle in Netherlands is our battle in Greece. Our common battle is uh, the future, the alternative future of Europe, the alternative future of our peoples. And we have to give this battle and to win. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.